A Practical Guide to the Art of Relationship, The Mastery of Love, a Toltec Wisdom Book by Don Miguel Ruiz, Amber Allen Publishing, San Rafael, California, copyright 1999. Chapter 12, God Within You. You are the force that plays with your mind and uses your body as its favorite toy to play and have fun with. That is the reason you are here, to play and have fun. We are born with the right to be happy, with the right to enjoy life. We are not here to suffer. Whoever wants to suffer is welcome to suffer, but we don't have to suffer. Then why do we suffer? Because the whole world suffers and we make the assumption that suffering is normal. When we create a belief system to support that truth, our religions tell us that we came here to suffer, that life is a valley of tears. Suffer today, have patience, and when you die, you will have your reward. Sounds beautiful, but isn't true. We choose to suffer because we learn to suffer. If we continue to make the same choices, we will continue to suffer. The dream of the planet carries the story of humanity. The evolution of humans and suffering is the result of human evolution. Humans suffer because we know. We know what we believe. We know all those lies. And because we can't fulfill all those lies, we suffer. It's not true that you go to hell or to heaven after you die. You live in hell or you live in heaven, but now. Heaven and hell only exist in the level of the mind. If we suffer now, when we die, we still suffer because the mind doesn't die with the brain. The dream continues and when our dream is hell, our brain dies and we are still dreaming in the same hell. The only difference between being dead and being asleep is that when we are sleeping, we can awake because we have a brain. When we are dead, we cannot awake because we don't have a brain, but the dream is there. Heaven or hell is here and now. You don't need to wait to die. If you take responsibility for your own life, for your own actions, then your future is in your hands and you can live in heaven while the body is alive. The dream most humans create on this planet is obviously hell. This isn't right or wrong or good or bad and there is no blame. Can we blame our parents? They did the best they could when they programmed you as a little child. Their own parents did the same with them, the best they could. If you have children, you couldn't know what else to do either. How can you blame yourself? To become aware doesn't mean you need to blame anyone or carry guilt for what you have done. How can we carry guilt or blame for a mental disease that is seriously contagious? You know, Everything that exists is perfect. You are perfect just the way you are. That is the truth. You are a master. Even if you master anger and jealousy, your anger and jealousy are perfect. Even if you have a big drama going on in your life, it's perfect. It's beautiful. You can go to a movie like gone with the wind and cry for all that drama. Who says that hell is not beautiful? Hell can inspire you. Even hell is perfect because only perfection exists. Even if you dream hell in your life, you are perfect just the way you are. It is only knowledge that makes us believe we are not perfect. Knowledge is nothing more than a description of the dream. The dream is not real, so knowledge isn't real either. 
Where every knowledge comes from, it is only real from one point of perception. Once you shift the perception, it is no longer real. We are never going to find ourselves with our knowledge. In the end, that is what we are looking for, to find ourselves, to be ourselves, to live our own life instead of the life of the parasite, the life we were programmed to live. It isn't knowledge that will lead us to ourselves. It is wisdom. We have to make a distinction between knowledge and wisdom because they are not the same. The main way to use knowledge is to communicate with each other, to agree on what we perceive. Knowledge is the only tool we have to communicate because humans hardly communicate heart to heart. What is important is how we use our knowledge because we become the slaves of knowledge and we are no longer free. Wisdom has nothing to do with knowledge. It has to do with freedom. When you are wise, you are free to use your own mind and run your own life. A healthy mind is free of the parasite. It is free again the way it was before domestication. When you heal your mind, when you break free of the dream, you are no longer innocent, but wise. You become just like a child again, in many ways, except for one big difference. A child is innocent, and that's why he can fall into suffering and unhappiness. The one who transcends the dream is wise. That's why she doesn't fall anymore, because now she knows. She has knowledge of the dream. You don't need to accumulate knowledge to become wise. Anyone can become wise. Anyone. When you become wise, life becomes easy because you become who you really are. It's difficult to try to be what you are not, to try to convince yourself and everyone else that you are what you are not. Trying to be what you are not expends all your energy. Being what you are doesn't require any effort. When you become wise, you don't have to use all those images you created. You don't have to pretend to be something else. You accept yourself the way you are and the complete acceptance of yourself becomes the complete acceptance of everyone else. You no longer try to change other people or impose your point of view. You respect other people's beliefs. You accept your body and your own humanity with all the instincts of your body. There is nothing wrong with being an animal. We are animals and animals always follow their instinct. We are humans and because we are so intelligent, we learn to repress our instincts. We don't listen to what comes from the heart. That's why we go against our body and try to repress the needs of the body or deny they exist. This is not wise. When you become wise, you respect your body. You respect your mind. You respect your soul. When you become wise, your life is controlled by your heart, not your head. You no longer sabotage yourself your own happiness, or your own love. You no longer carry all that guilt and blame. You no longer have all those judgments against yourself, and you no longer judge anyone else. From that moment on, all the beliefs that make you unhappy, that push you to struggle in life, that make your life difficult, just vanish. Surrender all those ideas about being what you are not, and become what you really are. When you surrender to your nature, to what you really are, you no longer suffer. When you surrender to the real you, you surrender to life. You surrender to God. Once you surrender, there is no longer a struggle. There is no resistance. There is no suffering. Being wise, you always go for the easy way which is to be yourself, whatever you are.
Suffering is nothing but resistance to God. The more you resist, the more you suffer. It is simple. Imagine that from one day to another, you awake from the dream and you are completely healthy. You no longer have wounds. You no longer have emotional poison. Imagine the freedom you are going to experience. Everything is going to make you happy just to be alive wherever you go. Why? Because the healthy human being is not afraid to express love. You are not afraid to be alive and you are not afraid to love. Imagine how you would live your life, how you would treat the people you are close to if you no longer had those wounds and that poison in your emotional body. In the mystery schools around the world, this is called the awakening. It is as if you awake one day and you no longer have emotional wounds. When you no longer have those wounds in the emotional body, the boundaries disappear and you start to see everything as it is, not according to your belief system. When you open your eyes and you don't have those wounds, you become a skeptic. Not to increase your personal importance by telling everyone how intelligent you are or to make fun of other people who believe in all those lies. No, when you awake, you become a skeptic because it's clear in your eyes that the dream is not true. You open your eyes, you are awake, and everything becomes obvious. When you awake, you cross a line of no return and you never see the world in the same way again. You are still dreaming because you cannot avoid dreaming because dreaming is the function of the mind. But the difference is that you know it's a dream. Knowing that you can enjoy the dream or suffer the dream, that depends on you. The awakening is like being at a party where there are thousands of people and everyone is drunk, except you. You are the only sober person in the party. That is the awakening, because the truth is that most humans see the world through their emotional wounds, through their emotional poison. They don't have the awareness that they are living in a dream of hell. They aren't aware that they are living in a dream just as fish swimming in water are not aware that they are living in water. When we awake and we are the only sober person in the party where everyone is drunk, we can have compassion because we were drunk too. We don't need to judge, not even people in hell, because we too were in hell. When you awake, your heart is an expression of the spirit an expression of love, an expression of life. The awakening is when you have the awareness that you are life, when you are aware that you are the force that is life, anything is possible. Miracles happen all the time because those miracles are performed by the heart. The heart is in direct communion with the human soul. And when the heart speaks, even with the resistance of the head, something inside you changes. Your heart opens another heart and true love is possible. There is an old story from India about the god Brahma, who was all alone. Nothing existed but Brahma and he was completely bored. Brahma decided to play a game, but there was no one to play the game with. So he created a beautiful goddess, Maya, just for the purpose of having fun. Once Maya existed and Brahma told her the purpose of her existence, she said, okay, let's play the wonderful game, but you have to do what I tell you to do. Brahma agreed and following Maya's instructions, he created the whole universe. Brahma created the sun and the stars, the moon and the planets. Then he created life on earth, the animals, the oceans, the atmosphere, everything. Maya said, how beautiful is this world of illusion you created. Now, 
I want you to create a kind of animal that is so intelligent and aware that it can appreciate your creation. Finally, Brahma created humans, and after he finished the creation, he asked Maya when the game was going to start. We will start right now, she said. She took Brahma and cut him into thousands of teeny tiny pieces. She put a piece inside every human and said, now the game begins. I am going to make you forget what you are and you are going to try to find yourself. Maya created the dream and still, even today, Brahma is trying to remember who he is. Brahma is there inside you and Maya is stopping you from remembering who you are. When you awake from the dream, you become Brahma again and reclaim your divinity. Then if Brahma inside you says, okay, I am awake, what about the rest of me? You know the trick of Maya and you can share the truth with others who are going to wake up too. Two people who are sober in the party can have more fun. Three people who are sober is even better. Begin with you. Then others will start to change until the whole drama, the whole party, is sober. The teachings that come from India, from the Toltec, the Christians, the Greeks, from societies all over the world come from the same truth. They talk about reclaiming your divinity and finding God within you. They talk about having your heart completely open and becoming wise. Can you imagine what kind of world this would be if all humans opened their hearts and found the love inside? Of course, we can do it. Everyone can do it in his own way. It's not about following any imposed idea. It's about finding yourself and expressing yourself in your own particular way. That is why your life is an art. Toltec means artists of the spirit. The Toltec are the ones who can express with the heart, the ones who have unconditional love. You are alive because the power of God, which is the power of life. You are the force that is life, but because you are able to think at the level of the mind, you forget what you really are then it's easy to see someone else and say, oh, there is God. God will be responsible for everything. God will save me. No, God has just come to tell you, to tell the God in you to be aware, to make a choice, to have the courage to work through all your fears and change them so you are no longer afraid of love. The fear of love is one of the biggest fears humans have. Why? Because in the dream of the planet, broken heart means poor me. Perhaps you wonder, if we are truly life or God, then why don't we know it? Because we are programmed not to know. We are taught, you are a human, these are your limitations. Then we limit our possibilities by our own fears. You are what you believe you are. Humans are powerful magicians. When you believe you are what you are, then that is what you are. And you can do that because you are life, God, intent. You have the power to make yourself what you are right now. But it's not your reasoning mind that controls your power. It's what you believe. You see, everything is about belief. Whatever we believe rules our existence, rules our life. The belief system we create is like a little box we put ourselves inside of. We cannot escape because we believe we cannot escape. That is our situation. Humans create their own boundaries, their own limitations. We say what is humanly possible, what is not possible. Then just because we believe it, 
it becomes truth for us. The prophecies of the Toltec have foreseen the beginning of a new world, a new humanity where humans take responsibility for their own beliefs, for their own lives. The time is coming when you will become your own guru. You don't need other humans to tell you what the will of God is. Now it's you and God face to face without any intermediary. You were searching for God and you found God within you. God is no longer there outside you. When you know that the power that is life is inside you, you accept your own divinity and yet you are humble because you see the same divinity in everyone else. You see how easy it is to understand God because everything is a manifestation of God. The body is going to die. The mind is going to dissolve also, but not you. You are immortal. You exist for billions of years in different manifestations because you are life and life cannot die. You are in the trees, the butterflies, the fish, the air, the moon, the sun. Wherever you go, you are there, waiting for yourself. Your body is a temple, a living temple where God lives. Your mind is a living temple where God lives. God is living within you as life. The proof that God lives within you is that you are alive. Your life is the proof. Of course, in your mind there is garbage and emotional poison, but God is also there. You don't have to do anything to reach God, to reach enlightenment, to awaken. There is no one who can take you to God. Whoever says they will take you to God is a liar because you are already there. There's only one living being, and want it or not, resist it or not, effortlessly you are with God already. The only thing left is to enjoy your life, to be alive, to heal your emotional body so you can create your life in such a way that you openly share all the love inside you. The whole world can love you, but that love will not make you happy. What will make you happy is the love coming out of you. That is the love that will make a difference. Not the love everyone has for you. Your love for everyone is your half. The other half can be a tree. It can be a dog. It can be a cloud. You are one half. The other half is what you perceive. You are the half as a dreamer and the dream is the other half. You are always free to love. If your choice is to be in a relationship and your partner is playing the same game, what a gift. When your relationship is completely out of hell, you will love yourselves so much that you don't need each other at all. By your own will, you get together and create beauty. And what the two of you are going to create is a dream of heaven. If you have already mastered fear and self-rejection, now you are returning to self-love. You can be so strong and so powerful that with your self-love, you transform your personal dream from fear to love, from suffering to happiness. Then just like the sun, you are giving light and giving love all the time with no conditions. When you love with no conditions, you, the human, and you, the God, align with the spirit of life moving through you. Your life becomes the expression of the beauty of the spirit. Life is nothing but a dream. And if you create your life with love, your dream becomes a masterpiece of art. This concludes chapter 12. Please like, comment, and subscribe for updates and the next chapters.